Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Woo, we're going to shine the wall tonight. Get with me if you can. Amen. Sylvia, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Sylvia? Amen, amen, hallelujah. Let me know if you can hear me, please. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're going to start at 7.07. Give people time to jump on. They know we start at 7.07. <coughs> uh, hallelujah. You're anointing, my God. Hallelujah. 707, praise the Lord. Amen. I ask that you share this page. Bring the message across so that we can equip the saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. Grab some popcorn. Amen. Seven oh seven, we will start. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Who else is out there? I see three eyeballs looking at me. Guinness. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. We're going to start at 707 few minutes <clears throat> give people time to jump on and then we're going to get into this word man this word is good this word is powerful Laura good to see you we are going to get into this word I pray that it's a, a life-changing word amen <coughs> share the page Share the page. We're going to get into some meat tonight. Not milk. Meat. Solid food. Amen. God has a word. God has a word. <clears throat> Good to see you too. There you are. Just kidding. Just kidding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 707 we got three minutes we're gonna get started <clears throat> uh, share the page let others hear this word man god is on the move the kingdom of god is on a forceful advance amen and god has a word for us tonight um you know the lord shows me a lot of things 
and uh, some things I share, some things I just take to prayer. But um, <clears throat> what the Lord is showing me tonight, and what He's been showing me right now, is the body of Christ is in disarray. It's just like all over the place, man. We should be functioning as one unit, <clears throat> and we're not. Amen. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start at 7.07. we got two minutes. Let others get on board. In the meantime, I'm going to ask that you share this page. Amen. Praise God. My niece um, <clears throat> posted a video of my son, her and my son, Johnny. My niece is, uh, her and Johnny were real close. They were the, they're the first two grandkids. And, uh, and um, they were comadres and compadres. She posted this video earlier and um, <coughs> brought tears to my eyes. Amen. I miss my son, man. I, I really do. Amen. <coughs> but we got another man. And I pray that um, I pray that you share this message. Amen. The word don't need me, Lord. Good evening. We're going to get started. Word of prayer. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we just come before your throne today for the opportunity to be right here, Father God. <coughs> Lord, I ask and pray, God, that as John 3.30 says, Lord, that that I must decrease, God. Put me aside, Lord God, and let your Holy Spirit just have freedom today, God, to reign tonight, Lord, Father God. I pray that every heart word tonight, Father God, that, that they come with the spirit of expectancy, Father God, and that the word would fall on good soil, God. I pray, Father God, that, that it would minister to us, Father God, this evening, Lord God, and that it would equip us, God, to do the sovereignty, God, that has been bestowed upon our lives, God, and we give you all the honor and glory, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> well, that you're ready to hear the word. You know, it's been a crazy stuff all day. From the moment I got it's just like, I know the enemy's mad. And that's okay. I got to do what God has instructed me to do and what God has given me to do. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about <clears throat> something. Separating yourself from the unbelievers. Let's talk about this. But before we begin, we're going to set the foundation. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Familiar passage of scriptures and I stand that what the word is. Oh, <coughs> wrote right here. All scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for correction, for training and righteousness, so that the man or fully equipped. Amen. God's word is for you and I. It's for teaching, for rebuking, for correction, for training and righteousness. That's what this word of God is for. So that we are equipped and fully capable for every good work that we have to do. That God is the source or originated in Scripture. Amen. God through the Holy Spirit used to write what is revealed. It's not man's opinion. It's not man's word. I share. These are words and these are, are messages that are inspired by the understanding that this is what God's word's for. It's to hear from God or, you know, like a genie where we just rub the Bible and God appears and he's going to... No, it's not. It's for, re, it's for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training us in righteousness. Amen. It's straight from the word of God. Amen. It will always be backed up. What I'm sharing with you. <coughs> Amen. It's something that's going to hit some hearts. Pray, We pray that it hits your heart. And not only just a spirit of repentance. And repentance is so that we could turn. Because this isn't even part of my message. People who are called by my name. Would turn from their wicked ways. Amen. See there are people. And he says if they would turn from, my, from their wicked ways. Amen. And seek their land. See you got to. Do a 180 in life, amen. So, like I said, straight from the word of God, and it's not going to be my opinion, amen. It will always be backed up with 2 Corinthians 
chapter, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. But before we do, I want to share something about the Corinthian church. Amen. Since Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the Corinthian church had been swayed by false teachers. They claimed he was fickle, proud, unimpressive in appearance as speech, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And to deal with these difficulties, and upon his return, he re the Corinthians changed of heart. The second letter to express his thanksgiving for the repentance, for the repentant majority, and to appeal to the rebellious minority, to accept his authority. Throughout the book, he defends his conduct and character and call this. Amen. So Paul wrote this. Because the Corinthian church shouldn't have been living. And he sent Titus to go. And Titus wrote back to him and says, hey, they, they've changed their ways, you know. This, amen. We're going to talk right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Spiritual seat, bow down, lock it in. And 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, he says, do not be bound together. Together with unbelievers, for what does righteousness. Or what does light have in common with darkness? How many does Christ have with Belial share with an unbeliever? Amen. Or what agreement have with idols? Living God, just as God said, I will dwell among them and I will be their God and they shall be. Therefore, he says, come out from the says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will be a father, sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. Amen. The Lord was speaking. And he was talking to the Corinthian church. They were living a, a, a life that was contrary to the ways of God. Kind of like some people are living today. Contrary, they call themselves Christians, but they're living con contrary to the ways of God. Amen. <laughs> Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness have and lawlessness share together? Or what does light have in common with darkness? Do not be unequally yoked. Come on, Jesus. Do what do you have if you are sold out to Christ? real Christian. Amen? Oh, hi. What are you talking about with them? He says, what do you have in common with them? If you are sold out to Christ and in fact a real Christian, and, and when we get done with this word, I pray, man, I pray that it hits your corra, man, because it's going to reveal some things right now. Amen? In verse 15, he says, or what harmony does Christ have with Belial? Belial is a demonic force. Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? What I say? What does an unbeliever share with a believer? What does a believer share with an unbeliever? If you're hanging out with these people, what are you talking about? Amen? What are you talking about? Can they see the fruit inside of you that you're bearing? Or are you like a chameleon where you adapt to your surroundings? If you're around worldly people, you're going to act worldly because you don't want them to see that you're a Christian. But when you're around the Christians, you want to act Christian-like, amen, because you don't want them to see the worldly part of you. <laughs> amen. Are you a chameleon this evening? Let's check it out. <clears throat> Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, he says, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. He says, you can't. You can't do both, he says. You can't partake of the cup. You can't drink the cup of God and drink the cup of the world. You can't have both. You can't sit at the table of God and sit at the table of the, of the world. You can't do both, he says. Oh, come on, somebody. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. 1 Corinthians 10, 21. <laughs> you must choose today <clears throat> who you will serve and whom you're going to obey. God, His word and His ways, or your flesh and your ways. You can't have both. 
You can't have both. And God is speaking right now because I see a lot of it. You know what I see? I see people today that are in relationships with unbelievers. <laughs> they are in relationships with people of the world. They're not Christians. <laughs> but they're in relationships with them. Why would you be in a relationship with an unsaved person? Why would you be in a relationship with them? What would you have in common with them? If you're trying to serve God and they're serving the world, what would you have in common with them? Did you know that before you know, because I've seen this time and time and time again, before you know it, you're going to start partaking in what they're doing. I had a person that used to come to my Bible studies a long time ago. And she would ask me, because she would post up at bars. She would post up at clubs with people and she would come to Bible studies and she would go to church. She would ask me, Pastor, is it wrong? And I would tell her, I says, look, you got to use wisdom. Because before you know it, <clears throat> they're going to suck you in and you're going to be living that same lifestyle. That was about 2015, 16, somewhere around there. She's no longer serving the Lord. She's part of the motorcycle club now. She's flying colors, motorcycle colors. Amen. And it grieves my heart because I told her. And I'm telling you, God is warning some of you tonight. You are in indulging in things that you shouldn't be indulging in. And when we get done with this message, I pray, man, that it brings conviction. That the Holy Spirit just speaks to your heart. <clears throat> you must choose today <clears throat> who you're going to serve. Verse 16, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. He said, I will dwell among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my, pe shall be my people. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this. And for those of you that just jumped on, share this message. Share it on your page. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells inside of you? Don't you know? How can you be hanging out with other people of the world if the Spirit of God is inside of you? I get invited to a lot of things. I get invited to these car shows, these events. <clears throat> hey, hey, pastor, you want to come? And sometimes I'll go because the Lord has led me to go. But a lot of times I'll check with God. God says, you got no business there. And I have no business there. I don't. Why go? I've been to many car shows in my time. I don't need to be at another car show just to hang around with people. For what? Just to be seen? Is that what you're looking for? Acknowledgement? Confirmation from people? Like, hey, yo, I've seen you there. Are you seeking acceptance from the world? Why would you want to hang around with the people of the world if God took you out of Egypt? Why would you want to go back to Egypt and hang out with those people? <clears throat> he says, I will dwell among them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells inside of you? If you are a Christian today, you should have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the Holy Spirit isn't going to lead you to a bar. The Holy Spirit isn't going to lead you to an event where it's nothing but worldly partying going on. The Holy Spirit isn't going to have you there unless He sends you there to go witness, to go share with somebody. Amen? But if you're hanging out with these people at these events and you're not sharing God, what business do you have there? Are you just a chameleon? Amen? Adapting to your surroundings? Fitting in? You know what a chameleon is, right? <laughs> they change brown or green. Whatever around their surroundings on, that's what they do. They change to their surroundings. Amen? I've seen them. That you know, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit dwells inside of you? Come on, you have to know that. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you better check your walk. Because I'm going to tell you right now. You are not a true Christian. Because the Bible says that He will send us a helper. And if God has sent you the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit isn't going to have you hanging out with people that you shouldn't be hanging out with. <laughs> he says right here, separate yourself from the unbelievers. Do not be bound. Do not be unequally yoked. If you're in a relationship with somebody that isn't saved, a man or a woman, 
And they're not saved. What are you doing in that relationship? What are you doing there? You think you're going to win them over? They're on solid ground in what they're doing. Some of them are flying colors. I'm talking motorcycle colors. And you're hanging out with them? You're in a relationship with them and you're a Christian? What do you have in common with them? Come on, somebody. Can you grab this tonight? What do you have in common with them? Why are you in a relationship with the enemy? Woo, come on, Jesus. Because either you're serving God or you're not. Either you're a Christian or you're not. Either they're for God or they're not. They're an enemy to God. If they're of the world, why would you be in a relationship with the enemy? Why would you be hanging around with the enemy? Let's go. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 16. Chapter 6, verse 19, he says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? This body, this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and I belong to God. God, God paid, Jesus paid that price for me, and I belong to God. There's no way that I'm going to step out of bounds of what God has for me, and there's no way that you should be stepping out of bounds from what God has for you. Amen? There's no way. You're either going to serve God wholeheartedly or you're not. Amen? Praise the Lord. You can't, stand, you can't straddle the fence. The second part of verse 16, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16 says that, I will dwell among them and I walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's what Jesus says. I will, I will dwell among them and I will walk among them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Listen to this. John 14, 23 says this. Jesus answered and said to them, If anyone loves me, he will follow my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. If anyone, if anyone loves God, if anyone, Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will follow my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. See, there's contingencies here. That if anyone loves God, they will follow his word. His word is telling you to separate yourself from the unbelievers. And when you follow God's word, he says, my Father will love him. And we, Jesus says, we, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, we will come to Him and make our dwelling with Him. Some of you don't have the Holy Spirit because of the way you're living and the things that you're doing and the people that you're hanging around. Because if you had the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be in them places, man. You want to see the favor of God upon your life? Begin to do what the Word of God is telling you to do. And you're going to see God's favor. You're going to see God's favor. I'm living proof. My son was murdered this year, back in March. <laughs> and it's only because of who I am in Christ that I'm able to stand, that I'm able to continue this walk, that I'm able to continue to still function. Don't get me wrong, I have my days, I have my moments. But it's because of God, because God has come, the Holy Spirit has come, Jesus has come to dwell with me and to comfort me and to console me and to be with me and to strengthen me. <clears throat> you want to see the favor of God on your life? <clears throat> Surrender. Surrender your life. I think we preached on that a while back. Total surrender. See, some of you can't do that because you still love the world and the things of the world. Amen? You're still attracted to the world. You're afraid to let go, as Paul says. Let go. Forget about what lies behind you. You're afraid to let go. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. New things are to come. You're afraid to let the old things pass away. You want to be a Christian. You want, to bet the, you want the benefits of God. But you're afraid to let the old woman, the old man die. You're afraid to leave those things behind you. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. That past should be gone. The desire for the world and the things of the world should be gone. You struggle. You don't have full power and authority because of what you're doing. Because of how you're conducting yourself. Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? 
<clears throat> listen, John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he'll follow my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Jesus said, If you love him, you will follow his word. <clears throat> you will demonstrate your love for God by your actions. Either you are obedient to him and the word of God, or you're not. It's that simple. There's no in-between. Either you are obedient to God and His Word, or you're not. That's it. It's that simple. There's no in-between. Amen? Remember, we talked about the beginning that the Word is for correcting, teaching, amen, rebuking, amen, so that we are fully equipped. God is speaking right now because the church and some of the church members the body of church are so in disarray. You love the world more than you love God. And it's evident. It's evident. <clears throat> Amen? It's evident by the people you're hanging around with and the things that you're doing. Can I get an amen? There's no in-between, church. There's no in-between. Revelations 2.4 says this. But I have this against you. Check it out. This is Jesus speaking. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent. And do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you, and I will remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Come on. Jesus said, I have this against you. I can remember the day that I got saved like it was yesterday. I can remember the encounter that I had with God. I can remember the instant deliverance. It was November 13, 1992 on a Friday. I remember it all. I've never forgot. <clears throat> and I remember the love and the desires that I had for God at that time. When I came to know Jesus, amen? And I had that encounter with God. I was instantly delivered from a nine-year cocaine addiction. And I had this encounter with God. That fire... I have not let that fire die out. But some of you have lost your first love. And he says this. I have this against you. It's something he holds against you now. That you have, li you have left your first love. When you had, a, had that first encounter with God. Man there was so much man. Outpouring upon your life. You felt so good. You felt so feed man. You felt like orale man. Right? But somewhere along the line. You stopped reading. You stopped praying. And you started getting sucked back to Egypt. Amen. And he says, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember, he says, where you have fallen. And repent. Remember, he says, repent. And do the deeds you did at first, he says, or else. Not me, Jesus. He says, or else. I am coming to you. And I am will remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. See, Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us, right? <clears throat> we have that promise. <clears throat> but what separates us from God? Our actions, our deeds, our disobedience. He says right here, I am coming to you and I will remove your lampstand. From its place unless you repent. You have the opportunity to repent. To confess and repent now. Before he removes that lampstand. See he doesn't take nothing away from us. Our disobedience. Our neglect. Our desire for the things of the world. Separates us from God. He just removes things as we go along. And right here he says. I will remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. Unless you repent. Amen. <laughs> I often think, and I've shared it many times, I don't know what a church has in common with the car show. Why are churches doing car shows? There ain't no preaching going on there. You know what I mean? Why? That's between them and God. But my Bible tells me, do not be conformed to the things of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Why is a church conforming to the things of the world by having car shows? Explain that one to me, Lucy. I don't know. Amen. I don't know. Verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 17 says, Therefore, come out from the midst and be separate. He says, come out. 
Come out. Come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. He says, come out. Get away from them. Get away from them and do not touch what is unclean, he says, and I will welcome you. I will welcome you. I will welcome you, God says. But you got to come out. You got to separate yourselves from them. You got to separate yourselves from the unbelievers because you got nothing in common with them. Amen? Now, Jesus sat with the unbelievers, you're going to say, right? Yes, he did. He sat with the sinners. But why was he there? To be the light, to teach, to preach, to bring forth the word, to try to convert them over, not to hang out with them and party with them. Amen? He was there on a mission, just like you and I should be. If you're going to be around unbelievers, you better be there doing the work of the Lord, not just to hang out and party with them. Because the Bible says that He will come and remove your lampstand. He will come and remove your lampstand. You have no business being in relationships with unbelievers. Especially when they're flying colors from a motorcycle club. And you want to be a Christian. That's not God, man. You fell prey to the enemy. To one of the enemy's tactics. You fell prey to that. Amen? Listen, let's go. Isaiah 52, 11 says this. He says, depart. Depart. He said it twice. Depart. Depart. Go out from there. Do not touch what is unclean. Go out of the midst of her and purify yourselves, you who carry the vessel of the Lord. If you got the Holy Spirit inside of you, man, he says right here, depart. Get away from them, man. Do not touch what is unclean. Go out of their midst and purify yourself. Amen? I'll probably preach this message again because I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to fall on everybody's soil tonight. But I'll bring it forth again. And I remember years ago, <clears throat> years ago, I started doing Bible studies in 90, I got saved in 92, 93. 93, by the middle of 93, I was a Bible study leader, leading Bible studies. <clears throat> and I remember a pastor telling me, at that time he was one of my Bible study leaders. And he told me, he said, you keep preaching the same message until they get it. And I'll preach this message again if I have to, until you get it. Until you understand that you cannot be fornicating with the world. Amen? You cannot be hanging out with the world and say you're a Christian. You have nothing in common. We showed you through scriptures. You've got nothing in common with them. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's see. Revelations 18.4 says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people so that you will not participate in her sins and receive any of her plagues. He's talking about unbelievers. He's talking about the unsaved. Jesus says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out, come out of her, come out of them, my people, so that you will not participate in their sins and receive any of their plagues. Do you not know? Do you not know? In the, in the in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Sceva, there was seven brothers, and they saw what Paul and the apostles were doing, casting out demons in Jesus' name. And they went up to a demon-possessed people, and they said, we cast you out in the name Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demons told them, wait a minute, we know who Jesus is. And we know who Paul is, but you, who are you? And the word of God says that the demons jumped inside of them and that they took off running naked. Right here in Revelations 18, 4, he says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of them, come out of them, my people, so that you will not participate in their sins and receive any of their plagues. If you are not trucha, if you aren't smart, if you don't understand what God is saying here, telling you to come out he's saying that if you continue to participate and hang out with those people it's going to be a matter of time before you're going to receive what they're doing their plagues and their sins that you're going to receive them i don't know about you but that scares me because i love god so much man and i got so much work to do for the lord still that i i don't want none of that I don't want none of that. That's why it's always good to pray up, to read up, to seek God before you do make any move. Because anytime I get invited somewhere, 
I'll ask God, do I need to be there, God? Do I need to go? Holy Spirit will say, no, don't go. Don't go. I'm not going. Some of you, they shoot you a, a wheel and they say, hey, uh, well, let's go to this event this week. And, All right, I'm going. I'm in. Praise God. Praise God. You're going to a worldly event like that and you're going to praise God? Amen. And some of you don't even say praise God. Like, okay, I'm in. Let's go. Let me pack up. But he says to come out. To come out of there. My people. He's talking to his people. So that you will not participate in their sins and receive any of their plagues. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34 says, Do not be deceived. Listen, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Amen. Sober up morally and stop sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. Woo, come on. Oh, come on. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Are all of you that started this Bible study still with me? Let me get an amen. Or did they fall out already and say, Whoa, I don't want to hear this. I still love my friends of the world. Or I still love doing worldly things. Amen. Verse 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 18. He says, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God. He says, When you come out and separate yourself from them people, he says, I will be a father to you. And you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God. But if you continue to hang out with them, he will not be your father. He will not be your father. Right here he says, he tells you, separate yourself. Come on. Amen. He says, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Hosea 1.10 says this. Yet the number of sons of Israel will be like the sand of the sea which cannot be measured and counted. And in the place where it is said to them, you are not my people, it will be said to them, you are the sons of the living God. So you don't want God to tell you, you're, you're not my people. Amen? You're not my people. Because of the things that you did and the people that you hung out with, you want Him to say, you are a son, a daughter of mine. You want God to acknowledge you. Amen? But if you continue in the path that you're in, if you continue living the way that you're living and indulging in the things that you're indulging, you have taken yourself out from the covering of God. He says it. He says, repent. Amen? Repent. He's telling us to separate ourselves. And if you can't separate, if you haven't separated yourself, you are sinning before God. And you are not a child of God until you repent and you turn away. Amen? He says, if you separate yourselves, in Romans 8, 14, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. If you separate yourself, all that are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. God isn't leading you to hang out with worldly people, to hang out with only unbelievers. He said right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's go back there and read it again. What? He says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. What does righteousness and lawlessness share together? Or what does light have in common with darkness? The unbelievers are walking in darkness. What do you have in common with them? For what harmony does Christ have with Belial? Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? Or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? Or what are the temple of the living God? Just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. He says, therefore, if you want this, come out from their midst and separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean and I will welcome you. I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you. But if you continue hanging out with them, people, guess what? God is not going to be a I didn't write it. He is not going to be a father to you. He says, what does Christ have in common with Belial? Jesus didn't walk this world holding hands with the devil. But yet some of you are. Come on, Pastor John, be nice. I'm being nice. I'm just sharing the word of God. I didn't write this word. If you read your Bible, you'll know that it's in there. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Is the Holy Spirit leading you? Tonight, because if He isn't, He would not have had you doing, going to places that you shouldn't be. Hanging out with unbelievers. Listen to me. If you profess to be Christians, then in reality, we should be the temples of the living God. Dedicated to and employed for the services of God who has promised to reside in them, to dwell and walk with them, to stand in a special relationship to them, and to take, a speci take special care of them, that He will be their God and they shall be their people. I don't know about you, but I want the full inheritance of God. I don't want part of it. But the only way I'm going to keep it and get it is by being obedient. Separating myself from unbelievers. Amen. Staying away from places that I have no business being. Amen. Some of you are going to block me now on your posts, huh? Some, gonna block, some of you are going to block me now when you, when you check in somewhere now, huh? <laughs> That's okay. You can block me, but you can't block God. Now, there can be no agreement between the temple of God and idols. Idols are rivals with God. For His honor, amen? Idols are rivals with God for His honor. And God is a jealous God. And will not give His glory to another. There is a great deal of danger in communicating with unbelievers and idolaters. Danger of being defiled and being rejected. Therefore, the exhortation is to come out from among them. And to keep at a due distance, to be separate as one who would avoid the society of those who have the leprosy or the plagues for fear of taking infection. And not to touch the unclean thing, lest we be defiled. Let me read this last portion again. He says, To separate as one would avoid the society of those who have leprosy. If somebody has COVID, you're going to stay away from them. If somebody has leprosy, you're going to stay away from them. If somebody has a plague, you're going to stay away from them. And that's what the Spirit gave me. To be separate as one who would avoid the society of those who have the leprosy or the plague for, being, for the fear of being infected and not to touch the unclean thing lest we be defiled. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has spoken tonight. It's up to you. It's up to you. But if you don't, if you want to continue to hanging out with them people and continue doing the things that you're doing, just know you run the risk of him come taking your lampstand. You run the risk of opening your doors to be bombarded by infections, by plagues, by leprosy, any type of infection that they have. You run the risk of getting those infections. You run the risk of having your lampstand taken away. You run the risk of God not being your father. So you can't claim to be a child of God and be a friend of the world. You can't. You can't claim to be God's daughter, God's son, and be a friend of the world. There's no in between. You can't straddle the fence. We know what it says in the book of Revelations that I have this against you. Amen? That I have this against you. That you have left your first love. And then he goes on to talk about that I would rather have you have, have you hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Either you're going to serve God. If you want to serve the world, then go serve the world. Stop proclaiming to be a Christian. Go serve the world. God's okay. You want to go back to Egypt? Go back to Egypt. It's not what God wants, but that's your choice. But if you're going to be a Christian and serve God, to serve God, separate yourself from the unbelievers. Amen? You can't have both. Because I'd rather, he says, I'd rather have you hot or cold. I'd rather have you serve the world or serve me. Be hot or fire for me or be, a, be cold for the world. Amen? He says, but I would not want you lukewarm. He says, I will, vo I will vomit you out of my mouth. The word vomit in the Greek means violently spit you out. And I've shared a message on that as well. Amen? You run the risk of losing a lot of things. You can still go around and say you're a Christian. 
but you're going to lose your lampstand. You're going to lose the fire of the Holy Spirit. You're going to lose your father being your, being your father. You're going to lose your son and daughtership, amen, if you continue on the path that you're living. Ooh, now I know why the devil was pissed this morning. The word of God is spoken, amen, not me. The word of God is spoken. We're going to finish it with this, James chapter 4, verses 4. He says this, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The choice is yours tonight. He says, and James addresses him as an adulteress. You're committing adultery with the world. You belong to God and you're committing adultery, fornicating with the world. Amen. He says, do you know that, not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? I didn't write this. It's in the Bible. Check it out. James chapter 4, verses 4. He says, therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy to God. Amen. You make yourself an enemy of God when you want to be friends with the world like that. Amen. As I mentioned, some of you are in relationships with unsaved people. You want to play that role? Play that role. But you're making yourself an enemy to God. You're making yourself an enemy to God. Because that relationship, that's not of God. That's not of God. Amen. The choice is yours. God gives us that free will. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. He who opens the door, I will dine with him. He who doesn't will dine alone. Open the door to your heart and let God in. He will be with you. But if you close the door because you're out hanging around with unbelievers and doing things you shouldn't be doing, He's not going to dine with you. He will dine alone. You can say you're a Christian. You can say you're a Christian. But God sees otherwise and knows otherwise. Amen? Praise the Lord. Share this message. And let's bow our heads. I'm going to say this prayer. You can repeat this prayer after me if you want. You can say it out loud. You don't have to say it at all. Amen? But I'm going to say it for those that maybe just want to... Maybe they strayed a little bit tonight. They know they strayed. And they know that they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Tonight we have the opportunity to make it right. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads and repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask for forgiveness tonight for the things that I've done that are not of you. Father, maybe I've been hanging out with the world and unbelievers too much. Lord, I, want, I don't want my lampstand taken away, Father God. I don't want my sonship or daughtership taken away, God. So I ask for forgiveness tonight, God. That you forgive me for what I've done and maybe things I've said, Lord. I invite you back into my life tonight. And that you would help me, God, to live a life according to your will and according to your word, God. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Come into my life from this day forward and help me make it right. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Father, we just pray for those tonight, God, that maybe they've said that prayer, Lord. And maybe they didn't, God. We just lift them all up, God. And I pray for your covering upon them. I pray that you spoke to them tonight. I pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to them, God. And that we begin to make changes in our lives, Father God. Changes for the better, Lord, because your word tells us to separate, to come out of their midst, God. I pray, Father God, that you would help us, that you would send your Holy Spirit, God, to help us and guide us and to lead us, Father God, from this day forward, God. I pray that you would wrap your arms around those, God, that need your strength, God, that you would equip them with everything that they need, Father God. Everything that we need, Father, is found in your word. And we get to the Holy Spirit, Father God. We pray this evening, God, that you just have your way in their lives. We thank you and we love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys and have a good night. Share the message. People need to hear it. See you in two weeks.